It's a day for filming. You arrive at location and the crew is unloading the truck. The DP and gaffer are mapping out their plan. The camera crew is assembling their gear. Grip and electric begin tweaking the lights. Makeup is preparing talent. Production design begins to bring the set to life. The mood starts to be dialed in. Lenses are mounted. Dollies are rolled into place. Actors get into position. And Video Village lights up with pictures to look at. When you're on set, there's this moment when a ballet of chaos culminates into a feeling of relief when you look at the monitor and you realize this is starting to work. Then everybody quiets down. The AD calls for ready. Quiet all around, roll sound. And you roll your first take. For those of you who do this often, we rely on seeing and hearing a live feed of our work while we roll. Monitors in Video Village allow us to view the cameras without being next to them, and headphones allow us to clearly hear the mics as the actors speak. But when I want to review footage that we already shot, all these tools, all that concentration, and all that momentum grinds to a halt. Well, we just took this process, which has largely been unchanged for a century, and we fixed it. And I want to take you on a deep dive how it works. First off, if you haven't seen our live Strata launch, you should check it out and watch a real-time demo of our initial capabilities that we did in front of a live audience. One of those capabilities is the first virtual multicam cloud sync playback engine. I know, for a technology I'm this excited about, we should have a better name. So please feel free to suggest any. But let's start off by showing you the result. What you're seeing here is an instant playback of two cameras, A cam and B cam, automatically paired together along with a separate polyphonic or multi-channel uncompressed audio file, all playable and scrubbable in full synchronization, which automatically assembled itself completely render free with scene and take name. So how is all this possible? Well, like a lot of cool things in life, it starts with something boring, time code. For automated multicam dailies to work, being in control of time code is crucial. Timecode allows us to establish a simultaneous and unique reference point between cameras and sound. Normally, you can deliver assets to an editor to use the timecode to assemble the takes and post. But there's several problems with relying exclusively on that workflow. First, you typically need an entire editing machine or bespoke dailies tool in order to do such a task. Second, this is difficult to do on set. Third, you can't begin this task until everything is downloaded, shipped, and transferred. Fourth, if you want to share these results, you need to re-render them together into a new file, which means you have to upload these duplicative files back to the cloud for others to see. And last, you are still limited to seeing one take at a time. I think it's time that we fix this. So we just invented a way to skip pretty much all these steps, which means you can stay in the creative zone longer, and more importantly, you don't have to be patient. So how did we do it? Well, there's lots of ways to set up reliable timecode on set. I use the Ambient Locket system. Ambient is a little bit more expensive than some timecode systems, but it offers a wider set of features. Ambient is my favorite because they not only generate the timecode source with a rechargeable box called the Locket, but they also make a smart slate with visible timecode. This slate has a battery you can recharge over USB-C, plus it takes AA batteries. But the slate also has a built-in locket. This can act as a receiver or a transmitter. The coolest tech within the Ambient ecosystem is called ACN, or Ambient Control Network. This is a self-managing wireless timecode network, which is automatic to set up and much more reliable than Bluetooth solutions. ACN allows devices to wirelessly synchronize across multiple tools and remain synced, often without cables. This is critical when you're shooting a style called dual system sound. Dual system means we're not running audio into the camera and intend to sync the audio to the video files later in post. Dual system has always been common in filmmaking, mainly because it was not possible to record audio directly into a film camera. Single system audio is when audio microphones are fed directly into the camera. This is popular in broadcast style workflows like news, sports, interviews, events, or journalism. But in recent years with products like Rode and NLE auto syncing tools like Pluralize, it's becoming more common to use dual system audio configurations. The advantage of dual system audio is simply that the disciplines of camera and sound are often owned by different specialists who can focus on those tasks. Most of the time when audio goes bad, it's because the person operating the camera was also responsible for it. And let's face it, good sound is hard to get. In our case, we're recording four different mics. We have three actors and a boom, and that means running four channels of audio into a camera is either too cumbersome, too hard to monitor, or there simply aren't enough input ports on the camera to even do it. By having a location sound mixer focus entirely on recording audio separately, the camera team can focus entirely on the picture. 
and the ambient ACN network is the link between these two departments. So here's how it works. First, I turn on the ambient locket and start the timecode, which runs off an internal time of day clock displayed in 24 hours. A long press of the green button on the locket automatically syncs the slate. So in mere seconds, the slate is jammed with the same timecode as the locket. Now I connect the locket to my audio recorder. This should work with a five pin Limo cable that comes with almost every field recording device, such as a top of the line professional unit like a Sound Devices 888 or a less expensive model like a Zoom F8. I set the timecode to the recorder to external and connect the locket using the timecode cable. And now the audio recorder matches the same timecode as the slate. The value here is when a camera assistant holds the slate up, we not only see the name of the take, but we can literally see a picture of the exact timecode moment the audio is recording. In other words, smart slates turn audio into a visual and the reference is the corresponding time code. This is why investing in a smart slate is worth the money. When the slate claps, our stick's sync point is actually just a backup in case the time code of the camera or sound is off. If everything is perfect, you technically don't even need it, but having that backup clap is always useful. The cameras we're using are Panavision DXL2 cameras. The sensor and CPU of these cameras is built by Red Digital Cinema, and Red was the first company in the world to put an ACN receiver inside a camera. The good news is if you don't have a DXL, the new Red Raptor XL cameras also include the ambient ACN chip. So if you own one of those, you already have an ambient receiver and you didn't even know it. If you don't have a Raptor, Ambient makes a Nano Locket, which is a small receiver that connects your locket to cameras like a Sony FS7 or Canon C300. But since there's a small ACN antenna built in on the DXL, I don't need an external timecode locket. All I have to do is go to my camera menu, project settings, timecode, and switch the camera to ACN. Once I select that, I go to the locket and I long press the green button again, which will wirelessly send a timecode signal to both cameras. And now both A and B will automatically switch to the ACN wireless network. And that will continue jamming the camera throughout the day. And now we have a hassle-free timecode parity between A cam, B cam, the slate, and the sound mixer. With all these devices in sync, we can shoot takes without having to worry about the relationship of all these individual assets. So next we log into the Strata platform. Strata is able to connect to your existing cloud storage so you don't have to buy new storage to use it. Right now my assets are in the Frame.io cloud, so we'll connect to that. Once I've connected, I can create a bin. I'll call this bin dailies. Now in Frame.io, I just selected my A camera take and sent that to the bin, then B camera, and I'll send that to the bin. Then I navigate to the audio and send the audio take to the bin. Now in my dailies bin, I see my three assets. Remember, these assets didn't actually move. They're still in Frame.io because just like in your nonlinear editor, you can make bins and it doesn't affect the original location of your assets. Strata is reading off the Frame.io storage. And these three assets can be many different types of files, such as XAVC, ProRes, HEVC or H.264. All I have to do to sync them is use a new technique we call Strata Stacks. Since my location sound mixer named the files the scene and take name, I simply select the audio and choose the corresponding take for A cam and add to stack, then B cam and add to stack. And now when I click on the audio asset, my A and B video assets are automatically synced and stacked together. Notice at the bottom, the stack displays as a mini timeline and shows the relationship between the start points of A cam, B cam and sound, which are all independent. I can go to the first point of the clip where all three assets overlap and there we can see the slate matches perfectly because the audio timecode represented by the slate is the same as the A and B camera timecodes. When we hit play, now we have a take comprised of three different assets playing off a third party cloud automatically in sync and it didn't have to be rendered. Plus, we didn't need to import files into an editor to do it. Seeing both angles at once means you can not only watch dailies in half the time, it's easier to keep track of takes because you don't get lost searching for alternate angles. And all of this can be 100% automatic. This is a virtual file, so we can still peel the layers apart, selecting just a cam or just B-cam, or mute the audio, or even remove it from the stack. Now we can go back to all the original clips and do a bulk action. A-cam, B-cam, and audio can be loaded into the bin, and with one click we can stack them, and they will use the corresponding timecode from the ambient to stack together. Since the location sound mixer named the files seen and take, 
In my media browser, I can see the take name, which matches the slate. Now I can click on any take and play it back synced and multicammed. And I can invite fellow collaborators on or off the set to watch the dailies too, or even deliver these to an NLE. Dailies are so important to view and are a foundational element when working in Hollywood. In the United States, we call these dailies. In Europe, they're known as rushes. But on small projects, they often don't exist at all. And I think I know why. When you're a small project or you're working with a small team, you don't have time to slow down and create these kind of files to share. Or you don't have an easy way to do it. We aim to fix that. We believe that if making dailies or rushes were this easy and fully automatic, then more people would be able to take advantage of having them. I find being able to refer to takes directly with cinematographers and gaffers, producers and actors helps everyone better calibrate to what's in your mind. Technology like this can enable teams to better orient around your creative vision and more importantly, hone in directly on things that are bothering you so everyone is clearly seeing through the fog. Access to footage without waiting is a powerful ally, especially when the clock is ticking. And it's about time that we're able to see and hear every angle together without delay. So how did I get those video files into Strata so quickly? Well, in the next episode, we'll explore how we can connect a special device to the cameras and shoot directly into the cloud.